I've often felt that reading through Mark's Gospel is a bit like sitting on a high-speed train, looking out of the window as the landscape outside flashes by. There are fields, hills, villages, rivers, all go flying past in no time at all. Before you can process that visual information in one window, you're on to another series of images and impressions. But then, as you approach a major station, everything slows down. The pace drops and you find yourself able to catch the details of the countryside. Mark writes his account of the life of Jesus with similar velocity. He moves quickly through the various miracle stories, the confrontations of Jesus with the authorities and those discussions with his disciples. There's no time to stop. And then, as we approach the terminus of the gospel, Mark takes his foot off the pedal and we proceed slowly through the last week of Christ's life to the ending, which is, of course, a beginning. For the life of Jesus has no terminus. Not for him, as for us, the inevitable loudspeaker announcement of the train guard over our lives. The train terminates here. Will all passengers please take their possessions with them? Of course, we can't take our possessions anyway. That's it for our body and all our accumulated prizes. All that baggage is left behind, but not for Jesus. Which is why the end of Mark's Gospel is a hole in the ground and an empty grave and a bodily resurrection to a new life and world. And that, of course, is the reason Mark wrote his Gospel in the first place. And it's why people like us need to read and absorb its key message, which is this. Jesus is God's King and our Saviour. He has authority and power over every reality, disease, the demonic and death. Creation bows to Him, evil submits to Him, and we are called to follow Him through life into life beyond death. Mark's Gospel, then, is an adventure about life as an adventure with the man who is God. So let me encourage you to join us every Sunday morning on the Gospel train. It's going to be a great ride, and by the end of it, I hope that we will all confess with that centurion at the foot of the cross, surely this man is the Son of God.